Right. Yeah, no. It's a work in progress, just like me. Anybody a work in progress? Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> we're all a work in progress. Uh, we're going to have a look at uh, Luke 13, but before that we're just going to have a, a little look at Luke 12, the first verse of Luke 12. Uh, I wonder what you think of, um, of hypocrites. <laughs> that's, a, that's, a, that's a good one, isn't it? Oh, by the way, uh, I think you need to put your seatbelts on. <laughs> because I think I think God's I mean God, God's going to speak to us today. So put your seatbelts on. Uh, hi- hypocrites, yeah. What what um, what do you think about that? I mean, are you on? Are you on? I'm on. Good on you, Steve. Yeah, isn't it isn't it challenging when you think about that? I mean, it, and you only know that when you really take a look at yourself, don't you? Because it's quite easy to look at so many other people. But not yourself. And then somebody said, if you point one finger at somebody else, there's three pointing back at you, don't they? <laughs> yeah. True, isn't it? Yeah. Anyway, Luke chapter 12. Meanwhile, when a crowd of many thousands had gathered, so that they were trampling on one another. So think about this. There's thousands of people there, and they're trampling on one another. That's a crowd. That's a lot of people. You, you, you see crowds like this in India quite often. And they do trample on one another. Um, <laughs> You know, uh, the patient, but they're, they're hungry. <laughs> if you know what I mean, the patient, but they want to, they want some, and that's what they're like. And Jesus, so they have that situation, and the crowds just all, you know, trying to get to Jesus. They've heard about this Jesus. They've heard his speaking. They know he does miracles, and they want to get a piece of him. They really want to go and get hold of him. They want to see him. They want to touch him. They want to hear him. They want to just really, uh, who is this Jesus? You imagine if you're at the back of thousands of people and he's at the front, you're going to be, everybody's fighting, so it's chaos, total chaos, it wasn't all nicely ordered and structured, it's chaos, and, and I love how God brings amazing things out of chaos, yeah, you know my life was in chaos, That's right. and, and God's brought amazing stuff out of my life, out of the chaos, and, and your life, wherever you are today, you might find it a little bit chaotic at times, but just wait, <laughs> Because the Bible says what the enemy meant for harm, God will bring out for good. Yeah. And so we, we need to understand that it's God. But he, he, he's, he lives in us, he's invited into us because we invited him in. And so once we've invited God in, we've now got to let him have free reign. It's no good inviting God in and then carrying on your merry way as if nothing's happened thinking that God's just another... Adam. Good, Brian. Another Adam. It's like getting married. If you have a ring on your finger to get married, it's no good having a ring on your finger and not loving the person that you're married to. You've, you've, got, to, you've got to have both. You, you can't just say, well, I'm married. I've got a ring to prove that I'm married. But the proof in your marriage is in the love for the person that you're married to. And, and, and you can be an hypocrite to your husband or your wife just by the, not treating them as the scriptures say that husbands love your wives and wives, you know, wives obey your husbands really, come under the authority. God's plan is that, that we come under the authority, the spiritual authority. And it's by doing that, that the sh- pure love of a marriage achieves many things and um, not break up. And, and God, he's, he's got all this for us, in store for us, to help us and, and lead us. So we can, be in a, we can be a hypocrite in many, many ways. In our workplace, I'm good at that. I know I am. I don't mean to be. It catches me off guard. Anybody else? It catches you off guard. And I think, oh, no, why did I say that? It's true, isn't it, Paul? Why did I say that? You know, what, what's, and, and just trying. It, it's really because you've already made a judgment on certain things. And then it doesn't go how you think it should go because somebody does it completely different. And all of a sudden, it's like, well, why? Why, why do you do things like that? And it can be like that. And Jesus is speaking to the disciples. Listen. And he says, listen, this, be on your guard against the yeast of the Pharisees. Be on your guard against the yeast of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. So what's he saying? That the yeast of the Pharisees is, is hypocrisy? Or that hypocrisy is the yeast? He's saying that hypocrisy 
is the yeast that you've got to be careful, the hypocrisy of the world. Yeah, the Pharisees, they were religious leaders and they had their own set way and they did things how they wanted to do things and they weren't happy about Jesus. They didn't like Jesus because Jesus brings change. You need to know if you invite Jesus Christ into your life, he will bring change and you won't like it. Don't think you'll like it because there's some of the change you won't want to change. But it's inevitable that God, if you give him free reign, he, he has the right to change. But we've got to want to go there, yeah, amen? So thinking about all that and where you are with your life today and how open you are to the Spirit of God to change you, we've got to be open. And the good thing is God's grace is just beautiful. God's grace is wonderful. He loves us even though we can be a little bit hypocritical at times. Even though we can. And, and just coming before him, repenting, asking for forgiveness, that God will, will just help us to overcome the things that we need to overcome. Amen. The Bible calls it sanctification. It's a little bit like gold. If, if you're going to produce pure gold, you boil it up and bubble it, up, it bubbles up and all the rubbish comes on the surface and they scrape the rubbish off and then they boil it again. And rubbish comes up and they scrape it off and they boil it again. And it's a refining fire. And the Holy Spirit is a refining fire. Hallelujah. I am being refined on a daily basis. And you will be as well. But sometimes we dig our heels in and say no. <laughs> no. But if you're going to journey with God. He's looking for a spotless bride. He's looking for a bride that honours the ring. He's looking for a bride that, that, that loves the one who loves her. And the church is spoken of as the bride of Christ. That's right. Is that true? That's right. And so God really That's wants to speak, speak to us and say, come on. Today we say, come on guys, he's saying. We can do this. I love Scott. I love it when Scott's uh, not here today. But I love when Scott says, God's got this. He's great, he's Scott. He'll just say, God's got this. It's good to have somebody in your life that you bounce things off. Yeah. Because sometimes Scott will be like down there and I'll say, come on Scott, God's got this. <laughs> And when I'm down there, he'll say, come on, Pete, God's got this. So, and it's good. You encourage and lift one another. Iron sharpens iron, amen. Yes, amen. Uh, just, right. just, it's good to find that person. Yes, it's good to find somebody, a Holy Spirit-filled believer who is wrestling with hypocrisy and wants to get rid of it, but wants to go on. You've got to find somebody that wants to go on, not somebody that's satisfied and wants to go on with God, but with themselves as well. Change must take place. Without change, there's no change. <laughs> True, isn't it? Without change. There's no change. Yes. Peter, talk about 10 years ago. Yeah. Um, and this person, who I was judging, yeah. who I did not like. Mm. Right? I did not like. I'm telling mm. the truth. Yeah. I didn't like. And he died. Yeah. And uh, friends and I were going to his funeral. I thought, no, I'm not going. I'm being, being a hypocrite. Mm. Did I go off? Uh -huh. Anyway, so. I went, I went, I walked to the cemetery on my own, I stood outside of the crematorium and I was praying all the way, all the time, and mm. a lot of people went in, mm. and I thought, and I, was just, I was just so upset, you know, mm. and I thought, I have to have so much hatred for that person, mm. you know, and I am being hypocrite. Mm. Anyway, I stood outside, and then the undertaker came out, yeah. and he said to me, there's a seat inside for you, <laughs> <laughs> all I needed, all I needed to take me inside, he sat me in front. No. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. So, that, that was God speaking to me. Praise God, yeah. You know, Brilliant, Joseph. Don't be an hypocrite. Yeah, that's it, that's it, Joseph. That's good, that. But isn't it funny how God worked that through you, through prayer, because you were praying all the way and talking to God. Keep talking to Jesus. It is so important. I, I would be lost without keep talking to Jesus. And so, so Jesus saying, you know, that beware, be on your guard against hypocrisy not just the I used to think it was just talking about the religious leaders you know the religiosity of the Pharisees no he's not talking about that he's talking about hypocrisy in general Acro across the board be on your guard of it watch it because it sneaks in it's like it, it sneaks in and it can and it can damage you so be on your guard for it so if you struggle with it guess what just pray against it pray against the spirit of hypocrisy if it's your problem i don't know if it is you will know if it is and god will certainly let you know if you don't if you ask him amen 
That's what God does. Amen. So, uh, Amen. <laughs> hallelujah. Thank you, hallelujah. Brian. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> now then, Luke 13. There were some present at the time that told Jesus about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mixed with their sacrifices. So Jesus there, and they're coming up, they're telling Jesus. So the Galileans, Pilate's murdered or had Galileans put to death. And then he's mixed the blood with the sacrifices to get at the Jews. Pilate weren't a good man. They're a bit of a rascal. And, and so they're coming up to Jesus and complaining and saying, Jesus, Jesus, the Pilate he'd mixed, he'd mixed the blood of the Galileans with the sacrifices. What are we going to do? And Jesus says, listen, do you think that the Galileans were worse sinners? You see, it's because Galileans were sinners. And, and blood is for cleansing. How come sinners' blood of Galileans who were sinners... Yeah. mixed with pure blood of sacrifice to heal us and to refresh us, the blood of the sacrifice for, the, for their sins, how can this blood of the Galileans, who are extreme sinners, mixed with the blood of the sacrifice, cleanse us from our sins? And that's what they say to Jesus. <laughs> and Jesus said, well, so you think the Galileans were worse sinners than you, do you? That's what Jesus said. So I didn't like him. Yeah. Jesus didn't mess about Hallelujah. What, so, so, so they were worse sinners than you yeah. what just because they suffered that way you think they were and then Jesus said no listen I'll tell you no unless no, unless right. you yeah, repent you, you too will perish there's a repentance got to take place whether it's a repentance from hypocrisy or bad attitude or bad habits or whatever it is, there's a repentance, there's a change. You've got to change. Part of the refining fire of God. That God, you know, I, I, I don't know about you, but I'm being refined. Yes, 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 yes. And there's things, there's sin in my life from when I was a kid that is slowly but surely being refined out of me. And at this day of 63 years old, 57 years later from when I started, I'm still being refined on some stuff. Amen. I still am. Amen. Amen. It is driven it, Paul. Thank you. Still on. Yes, and, and it's a journey. Yes, amen. But, but it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> but it's okay. So long as you keep your eyes on Jesus. And so long as you try and do better. We heard it, didn't we, on Thursday? Yeah. Just do better. Just do Be better. better. Just do, do better. Okay, Work <laughs> better. Yeah. Focus better. Reach better for better. Amen? Amen. Don't be settled. Just go for God. A friend of mine once sent, sent me a message that says, go for gold, go for God. <coughs> Hallelujah. Go for God. So, no, unless you repent, you two will per perish, he said. Or he said, oh, what about those 18 who died when the Tower of Siloam fell on them? Do you think that they were more guilty than all the others living in Jerusalem? Yes, they did. Yes, they did think they were more guilty because they thought then that if something came upon you, you know, if you have, like, I don't know, if you suddenly dropped dead, well, or something, you, you know what I mean? If, yeah. if a tower fell on you, you deserved it, yeah. you'd done something wrong, yeah. you were a sinner, and it was God's punishment. And that's what they believed. But Jesus said, no, uh-uh. Not at all. Unless you repent, he said. You too will all perish. And so Jesus tried to say, you know, and, and beware of hypocrisy. And learn to repent. Basically, that's what he's saying. If we could do them things, beware of hypocrisy, beware of your bad habits, whatever they might be, whether it's drinking too much or smoking too much, abusing your body in whatever way you might be doing. Beware of the hypocrisy and accepting that, but repent and ask God to set you free from it. That's in, be, we have to be in the world but not of the world but in order to be in the world for God we have to be aware of our end <coughs> remember Paul said in the Ephesians 6 we battle not against flesh and blood but principalities and powers of this dark world right. we, we have a battle on Jesus said you're always going to have trouble yeah. always. always, anybody have trouble? yeah Good, you're in God's, you're in God's uh, plan. <laughs> you, Jesus said you love it, so we're in Jesus. <laughs> Not great, is it? We don't like it, but...
But James says, consider it pure joy, brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials or troubles of any kind. So that's great. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> I don't know about that. Uh, it's time to put your seatbelt on. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, God, for the trouble that I'm in. Now, how are you going to get me out of it? Let me see you move. Hallelujah. Let me see your hand move. I can't do it, but I know you can. And this is what God wants us to grasp. We can't, but he can. That's right. Our husband will do anything for his wife. Right. If you've got a loving That's marriage, right. anything. That's right. Anything. I'll lay my life down for my wife. That's right. I would. Amen. God will do anything for his bride. God will do anything. But let us at least try to be a good bride, for goodness sake. Let us at least try right. to honour what Jesus did on the cross for us. Amen. Let us at least stretch. Let us at least push forward. Let us at least desire to read the scriptures or pray or or be filled with the spirit or worship God being in the world and not of the world is when we're doing all them things but at the same time we've also got to be effective in the world like salt and light yes, amen. so it's a really topsy-turvy situation we find ourselves in and the only way we can even attempt to <coughs> live in this way is by being filled with the Holy Spirit. Yes. Yes. Got to be filled with the Spirit. Yes. You need Jesus. You need the Holy Spirit. You got to keep talking to Jesus. Because the enemy will run you ragged. He will. He will look. Thank you for sharing what you shared. But you put your armour on now. That's right. Don't think that's that safe. You need to be get before God. You need to be filled with the Spirit. You need to protect yourself from anything that the enemy can have on you. Yes. Believe Amen. me, honest, that's a word for Amen. you. Just beware. Amen. Just beware because when anybody gets up to speak and give testimony in this room, in this room, I've never seen people be taken out as quick. So just get prayer. Pray for, we need to pray for Luke. We need to pray for Steve. All those that are getting baptized, we need to pray for them. Don't want to frighten you because God's got you. But you just need to understand that we're in a battle. Amen. And God does something in this place. He does. Yes, Ian? A couple got baptised last Sunday. Yeah. New believers, husband and wife. Yeah. Monday, she was in intensive care. Wow. Monday, intensive care. Wow. And the guy invited to the uh, breakfast. Yeah. He couldn't come because he were only sleeping an hour and a night. Wow. So that was... Yeah. The day after you get baptised, you see, you think you get baptised, you think, great, that's great, I'm done now, everybody's thinking, uh, <laughs> lock the door, don't go out, you're not going anywhere, I told you to put yourself out, don't be unbuckling your seatbelt, seat belts. we're in some turbulence now, <laughs> it's getting a bit turbulent, John, sit down, no, I'm just joking, it's getting turbulent now, it is, and it should, it should, the Spirit of God, the sword of God, the sword of the Spirit is sharp like a double-edged sword. And it's sharp. And when we get cut, it hurts. And so we should be, oh, I don't know about this. But it's no good. It's no good presenting a squeaky clean Christianity that you say forevermore because you're not. Because you've got to understand you're in a battle. Yeah. Amen? Yes, amen. Amen. Well, Jesus told him this parable. <laughs> A man had a fig tree growing in his vineyard. This all okay. Listen, nah, this is the this is the bet bit. bit I've, I've, we've all been we've all been uh, upset, ruffled, 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 ruffled feathers. That's it. And a bit a bit stirred, a bit shaken. Hallelujah! Thank you, Holy Spirit, for shaking us. Now would you put us some peace in us and strengthen us in the name of Jesus? Ah, those. He told them a parable. A man had a fig tree. Reading from verse six of Luke thirteen, growing in his vineyard, and he went to look for fruit. But he didn't find any. Jesus is trying to get across. He's telling him a parable, but a parable is also always it's always an expression of what he really wants to say to the people. It's, there's a hidden meaning. God wants to speak to us through this. <laughs> he didn't find any fruit. So he said to the man who took care of the vineyard for three years now. 
three years. I've been coming looking for fruit on this fig tree. Every year, year after year, came to check the fig tree. Any fruit? No fruit. Okay, off he goes. Year, three years. On the third year, he comes up and he thinks, you know what? I still haven't found any fruit. Tells the, the guy to cut, the, cut it down. Waste of time not bearing any fruit. Waste of time. Why should it use up the soil? What's the point? I could put something else there to, to, to produce fruit. Why, why leave this fig tree there? Sir, the man replied to the owner, he said, let's, let's just leave it alone for one more year. Come on, let's just give it a chance. Just, just one more year. One more year. Dig round it. We'll dig round it. And we'll fertilise it. We'll feed it. And then if there's no fruit, then we'll chop it. How's that? Then we'll burn it. Give us just, just one more year. Hmm. You know, God looks at us that, that way sometimes. You know, year after year, we don't produce fruit. We're too busy complaining about this or complaining about that. We're too busy trying to find our way forward and, and taking our eyes off Jesus because everything else has two cowardly attraction, two cowardly gaze, you know. It's a bit like, who knows when you're driving on the motorway and there's been an accident on the other side. You'll be in a long line of traffic on your side and you'll think, oh my goodness, and, and, and you wonder what's going on. And as you come past, everybody slows right slow to gaze at the accident, don't they? And then as soon as you've gone past, you're off again. That's what we're like. We get distracted by things that catch our attention. The wrong things in life, we get distracted. And it causes us to be fruitless at times. It causes us to be a little bit hypocritical at times. It causes us to be a little bit like, not really, well, I don't know, I can't really be bothered. Lukewarm. Don't, don't read Revelation, okay? Whatever you do. <laughs> and what it says about lukewarmness. The, Bible's, the Bible doesn't mess, you know, God doesn't mess with us. He tells us as it is because he wants us to be, he wants us to be set free and protected from all this attacks that we get, you know? So I wonder if we know, it, it made me think about this and if we know somebody that isn't actually bearing fruit, you know, they're a Christian. They're walking with God. It might even be you in here. You're walking with God and you're a bit jaded by it all and you're a bit fed up and you're really not sure. You need somebody to come alongside you and just dig round you. What do we dig when you dig round? You're digging the soil up. You're digging. And when you're digging round the person, you're digging round the soil. Do you not, do you not remember, Peter, when Jesus healed you, your daughter? I mean, if, if this were me, if this were me and I was like, you know, I'm done with church, I'm done with Christianity, I've had enough. And that's it, I think. I can't be bothered anymore. Then I'd hope that somebody would come up to me and say, Peter, do you not remember when your daughter were healed? Do you not remember in India when that girl went to heaven and she came back and told you what it was like in heaven? Do you not remember when that deaf ears were open when we prayed for them in the name of Jesus? Do you not remember when the Holy Spirit just picked that woman up like a feather? And floated her through the air. Do you not remember them things? Yeah. And I thought, oh yeah. Yeah. Of course. How, how did I get so far away? How, how did I get so distracted by the things of the world that I took my eyes off Jesus? That I took my eyes off the things of heaven? That God, all that God wants to do with me and through me and for other people... And for me as well and my family, it's a win-win with God. You can't not lose. You can't lose with God. But, but for some reason, there's something in us. You see, we're two people. We're Jekyll and I, real, every single one of us. You've got the dark side and you've got the light side. We were all born into darkness. We were all dark. Okay? Jesus is the light of the world. Jesus said, invite me into your life. Be all the sun at the door. I want to come into your life. Open the door, let me in. And then the light comes in. But the darkness doesn't like it. Who knows that? The darkness does not like the light. And you're wrestling with it. But that's where sanctification comes in. Where we have to dig. And, and we just need digging up a little bit. <laughs> we need a little bit of, you know, rough, bit of a, maybe we should like shake somebody. Come on, put yourself together. But not only that, it says fertilise the fig tree. 
needs feeding. How do you feed a person that's, that's thrown the towel in? How do you do that? Testimony, you tell them your story. You tell them your story because as you tell them your story, the reality of who Jesus Christ is becomes real to them. And, and iron sharpens iron. And slowly but surely they will start to come. But not only that, as we encourage others, we are encouraged. Who knows that? When you give your testimony, you're encouraged, aren't you? I am. I'm encouraged because when I speak my testimony, I think, wow, God really did do that. And it reminds me. I think it's amazing. Testimony is really good. Testimony is really good. And Jesus speaking to him, he said, if it bears fruit next year, fine. If not, then cut it down. In other words, Jesus saying, listen, there's always another chance. There's always another possibility. There's always another. And, and many of us find ourselves, you know, it's the scripture in Psalms where it says, uh, uh, why am I downcast on my soul? Why so disturbed within me? Yeah, put your hope in God. For I will yet praise him, my saviour and my God. I wake up downcast sometimes, do you? Do you wake up downcast sometimes? I wake up downcast, not just on a Monday morning because it's work. <laughs> oh, well, but, but no, I, I love work. But I just wake up downcast sometimes. Like, I've had enough. Anybody ever, like, you know, I've had enough. Do you ever get to that place, I've had enough? It's just like the pressure of life and I've just had enough. It's, it's okay. But I lift my eyes to the hills from where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Amen? Why are you downcast, oh my soul? Put your hope in God. Who is God? Lift your eyes up to the hills and you'll find out. This is our God. Amen? Amen. So I want to encourage you. How do you, how do you be, how do you go through sanctification and survive? You learn scriptures, start to pray it over yourself. That's the best way to do it. That's the best way to do it. And this room's amazing. And, and uh, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to pray scripture over every single one of us. And I'm just going to show you how to do it. Because you need to learn this. Because it is one of the most powerful things I've ever discovered. And as I was in worship, God said, I want you to do this. So I'm going to do it because God says so. So we're just going to pray, amen. So we're just going to pray. So Father, Father God, I want to thank you that your word said if we confess your mouth, Jesus Lord. And believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead. Lord, that I'm saved. Father, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. How amazing is that, God? Lord, your word says, not by might and the power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Lord, I can't do it, but by your Holy Spirit, Father, I can do it. I know that your word said that the gate's small and narrow and leads to life and only a few find it. But Lord, I just want to thank you, Lord. I hope I'm one of the few, but I pray that I am one of the few, Lord. Your word says, taste and see that you're good, Father God. I'm so glad, Father, that you are so good. And that when I taste you, Father God, and see, Lord, you're so good. Lord, I love it, the fact that suddenly, there's a suddenly in my life when the Holy Spirit just comes in from heaven, oh God, and fills my heart and fills my soul, and I meet with you, God. Your word tells us, oh God, that we've got to come near to you. And you'll come near to us, Lord, I want to come near to you today. Every single one of us, we come near you today, Father. Lord, in Genesis, we're told that surely the Lord's in this place. I didn't even know. Father, how could I not know that you were here, Father? I thank you, Lord, that even though I don't know, you are still here, Father God. And I want to thank you, Lord God, that when the angel spoke to the women not to be afraid, knowing that sometimes we're looking for Jesus and we can't really find him, that knowing that sometimes we think he's been crucified, we think he's been taken from us, but Lord, thank you that he's here, he's in me, he's risen in me, he's my life. And Lord, I love it, the fact that you say whatever's true. Whatever's noble, whatever's right, whatever's pure, whatever's lovely, oh God, whatever admirable or excellent in any way, Father God, I think about them things. And I want to thank you, Jesus, that you are all that and so much more. And I think about you today, Jesus. Father God, thank you that you said, let there be light and there was light. Would you speak light over me today, Father? I need it, Lord. I feel a little bit dark. I'm struggling, Lord. I'm wrestling with things, Father. I need that light, God. Jesus, you've said that you're the light of the world. If I follow you, I'll never walk in darkness, oh God. I want to thank you, Jesus, that you are my light and you are the light of life, Father. And I just praise you, Jesus. And I want to thank you, Jesus, for today. 
Pray for every single person in here. I thank you for the living word. I thank you for the powerful word. And Father, finally, I want to thank you that your word says, unless you build the house for God, yes. unless you build the house, the laborers build labor in vain for God. Would you build my house? Would you build me up for God? Would you help me through this sanctification process? Would you help me, Lord God, when I struggle with troubles? Would you help me, Lord, when I wake up and my soul's downcast? Would you help me, Lord God, when I find that I'm facing difficulties and there's no way I can see a way through? Would you help me, Lord God, to trust and to believe? Because, Father God, as we said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, Lord. And it is you, Jesus. Would you strengthen me today in the name of Jesus? Amen. 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 Hallelujah. You need to learn that. Not the prayer, but to speak it over because it's powerful. Amen. Hallelujah.